The fastest way to make a lot of money coding is to focus on a lucrative niche. Being well-rounded is great, but when you want to stand out in a competitive market, being able to present yourself as a niche authority is critical, and this video is going to help you do exactly that. So with that said, let's break down the five highest paying coding niches that you can get into. First up, we have artificial intelligence and machine learning. AI and ML involve creating algorithms that allow computers to learn from data and to make decisions. Applications range from self-driving cars to advanced voice assistants to fraud detection systems. We're seeing mass adoption of AI across various sectors like finance, healthcare, and retail, and overall AI becoming more and more integrated in our daily lives. Now, this mass adoption is leading to a surge in AI developers and huge compensation packages, especially from large companies. For example, software engineers at OpenAI are making between $500 and $950,000 per year, and the average AI developer is making over $130,000 per year. Despite the looming narrative, AI is predicted to create over 2.3 million jobs by 2025 while only replacing 1.8, leading to a net gain of 500,000 jobs. Now I know we hear all over the place that AI is replacing programmers and getting rid of all of the jobs that couldn't be further from the truth is actually creating a lot of opportunities that you can take advantage of right now. That said, if you want to become an AI developer, here's exactly what you need to learn to break into this field. Starting with mathematics, we have linear algebra, calculus, and statistics, and some more advanced mathematical concepts that you learned in something like university or computer science degree. Then you're obviously going to need to know programming languages. So something like Python and R are going to be the most popular for machine learning and AI. Moving into frameworks, there's a bunch of different ones you could learn, but the most popular would probably be TensorFlow, PyTorch, or Scikit-Learn. Then you're also going to want to know a lot of concepts related to AI and ML and some of the popular algorithms. Understanding things like neural networks, computer vision, natural language processing, your fundamental machine learning algorithms, say like linear regression. There's a lot of different topics you can get into here, but you probably want to take a few machine learning or AI courses where you really get all of the fundamentals down and you understand the mathematical concepts behind some of the core algorithms that are used to build some of those more advanced models. Lastly, there's a few tools that you may want to know, things like Jupyter Notebooks or a Python versioning system like Anaconda. There's a lot of stuff we could get into here, but that is really just scratching the surface of the types of things you'll need to learn if you want to dive into AI and ML. Now, the next niche on my list is data science. Data science is all about extracting meaningful insights from large data sets. It involves data cleaning, processing, analyzing, and even visualizing to allow businesses to make data-driven decisions. Now, in the current market, AI is actually being used a ton for data analysis, and if you want to learn more about that, you can check out this free resource from a good friend of the channel, HubSpot. This resource discusses how to use AI for data analysis and goes over the impact of AI, how to integrate it into your workflow, and the impact it can have on your efficiency. It even has a curated list of 30 plus AI tools to use specifically to enhance your analytical capabilities. That's actually my favorite part of this resource, a really useful list of tools that I can actually mess around with and see real value from in my workflow. I've left a link to this in the description, so make sure you check it out. Now with AI becoming more and more powerful, it's important to embrace it and really lean into these tools. Now a massive thank you to HubSpot for providing this resource and tons of others completely for free and for sponsoring today's video. Now data science has experienced tremendous growth over the past few years, and this has really been driven by the importance of data in decision-making processes across various industries. Job postings for data scientists have skyrocketed year over year, showing a strong and sustained demand for these types of professionals. Like artificial intelligence, data science is being adopted across a ton of different industries, even those that aren't typically considered that modern. Even your older school businesses are realizing the importance of utilizing data, and because of that, they need data scientists. So many businesses today are running based on data-driven decisions, and they need a way to analyze, clean, and visualize that data, which is where a data scientist comes in. 
This leads the average salary of data scientists to be over $113,000 per year, according to Glassdoor, where the more experienced data scientists in the managerial roles can earn significantly more than that, really displaying the value placed on their skills. Now, unlike artificial intelligence, data science can be a little bit easier of a field to break into. And although it does require a lot of education and practice, it's not nearly as complicated as something like machine learning or artificial intelligence. With that said, if you want to stand out as a data scientist, here's a list of skills you probably should know. Just like AI and ML, you're probably going to want to know Python and R, as those are the most popular when it comes to data manipulation and data visualization. Next, you'll want to know some other tools and languages. You'll need to know something like SQL, so you can understand how to interact with the database and run various queries, maybe tools like Tableau, Matplotlib, something like Seaborn. You'll also want to understand libraries to do data manipulation, so things like Pandas or NumPy if you're working in something like Python. Python. Beyond that, it will be good to know about some basic machine learning algorithms and also some statistical methods, things like regression analysis. Obviously, there is a lot more that you need to learn, but hopefully that gives you a little bit of an idea of what you'll be doing as a data scientist. Now let's get into blockchain development. Blockchain technology ensures secure, transparent, and tamper-proof transactions. It's used in cryptocurrencies, supply chain management, and even voting systems. As blockchain is a relatively new field, there's a high demand for skilled developers that have experience with this technology. Now that leads to lucrative opportunities where the average blockchain developer is making over $150,000 per year. This technology's novelty really means there's a lack of experienced developers that understand topics like distributed systems, cryptography, and smart contract programming. This means there's a huge opportunity to have really lucrative jobs in the blockchain field because companies are desperate to hire developers that actually have these skills. This is still a really good time to get into blockchain development, despite what you might be hearing, because we really are just getting started in this field. There's so much more growth to come. And I think if you learn blockchain development now, you're not gonna regret it in the future, especially in a few years. As blockchain continues to become more mainstream and its use cases broaden, I really think we're gonna see more and more growth. And again, if you can get in now, I think you're really going to set yourself up for a lucrative career with really high pay. With that said, if you want to be competitive in this niche, then here are the things that you need to know. Starting with programming languages, you're definitely going to need to know Solidity, but there are a few other options. For example, learning something like Rust, and you also probably want to know things like Python and JavaScript for actually interacting with your smart contracts and taking data from on-chain and presenting it in some kind of web app or maybe in a back-end service. Now, you'll also need to know about various concepts and theories like cryptography, distributed systems, smart contracts, how different cryptocurrencies exist and what the differences are between them, uh, consensus mechanisms like proof of work, proof of stake. There's a lot of different things you'll want to learn so you actually understand what a cryptocurrency is and what blockchain technology is really used for. Now, in terms of tools, you'll want to know about things like Truffle, Ganache, and MetaMask, and you'll want to look at different development frameworks like using Hardhat and Open Zeppelin. There's a lot of stuff to discover in this world of blockchain, but that's just a taste of what you'll need to learn if you want to get good in this field. Now, fourth on my list is cybersecurity. With the increase in cyber threats, cybersecurity has become increasingly important to protect sensitive data and maintain privacy. It involves defending against attacks, ensuring data integrity, and mitigating risks. In 2023, there was a reported gap of 3.5 million cybersecurity professionals, a gap that's expected to persist through 2025. Now, this highlights the immense demand for qualified cybersecurity professionals, especially as industries like finance, healthcare, and infrastructure become prime targets for cyber attacks. In fact, 67% of organizations reported staff shortages because they couldn't find qualified candidates to address their cybersecurity issues. Now, cybersecurity professionals are some of the highest paid in the tech industry, really reflecting the specialized skills required and how critical and important their role is. The average salary of cybersecurity specialists ranges from $102,000 to $150,000 per year, depending on experience and location. This is really a very lucrative role that has extreme demand and something I definitely recommend getting into 
if you're willing to learn all of the specialized skills. Now, because I'm someone who doesn't have a ton of experience in cybersecurity, I'm not gonna give you a list of things to learn here. I'm gonna recommend you go and do your own research and learn from people more experienced than me. What I will say is I know this is definitely a field that's very lucrative and constantly growing in demand. We're seeing more and more cyber threats. This is becoming more of an issue and more companies are really taking this seriously. I think this is a great field to get into. And if I was just starting out in tech again, this would probably be one of the number one ones that I would dive into just because of the potential and how much you can get paid and how important your role is. So last but not least, we have DevOps. DevOps combines software development and IT operations to improve deployment speed and quality. DevOps has become a critical component of modern software development and the need for developers with this specialized set of skills is continually increasing. As a DevOps engineer, you need to know about software development, but you'll be more responsible for building out continuous integration and continuous deployment pipelines while also handling things like monitoring and logging and dealing with kind of that bridge between the development side and actually putting things into production. There's a lot of different things that you need to know and your role is really critical to make sure that you can actually have software that users can use. The global DevOps market is expected to grow from about $10 billion in 20 2023 to over $25 billion in 2028, representing a compound annual growth rate of over 20%. This is really showing the increase in demand for DevOps engineers in this type of practice. And getting into the DevOps field can lead to really lucrative salaries and really important roles with increasing demand. The average salary of a DevOps engineer ranges, but those that have one to three years of experience earn about $97,000 per year, whereas those with four to six years of experience earn over $135,000 per year. Obviously, you can make a lot more than this, but this is a pretty competitive salary and something that's quite high if you compare it to a lot of the other regular development roles. Now, if you want to be competitive in the DevOps field, there's a lot of different things that you need to know, and you also need to be good at regular software development before you start jumping into this more advanced field. Regardless, let me give you a list of things you might want to consider if you are going to become a DevOps engineer. So in terms of programming languages, we have Python, Java, C++, Ruby. You don't need to know all of them, but knowing one or two of them can be good, especially because you'll probably do some scripting as a DevOps engineer. Now next, you'll want to know continuous integration tools. So maybe things like Jenkins, Apache Maven, Apache Ant, then containerization and orchestration. So things like Docker or Kubernetes, various cloud platforms. So we have AWS, Azure, Google Cloud, bunch of different options out there. Next, automation and configuration management. So things like Ansible, Chef, Puppet, and then we have monitoring and logging. So things like Prometheus, Grafana, Elk Stack, I don't even know what half these things are. I'm just listing them off because I found them in various job requirements. And then security skills. So things like dev, sec, ops practices. There's a ton of different things you need to know here. And really what you're doing is bridging the gap from development to deployment, which involves so many different steps and so many various tools. I am not a DevOps engineer or an expert in this field. I highly recommend if you want to get into this field, then do your own research and find a better mentor than me. But I do know this is a niche that's up and coming where you can get paid a lot of money and there is a lot of growth expected. So those are the five highest paying and in my opinion, best coding niches to get into. With that said, there are so many other niches you can get into, especially in 2024 and beyond. Some of them may even pay more. These are just the ones that made my list. If you disagree with me, I'd love to hear what you think in the comments down below. If you enjoyed the video, make sure to leave a like, subscribe to the channel, and I will see you in the next one.